All right, we're going to talk about uh, rate of change and tangents to curves. So the first kind of example we're going to look at is what happens if we have a free fall. So they give you this equation here, y equals 16t squared, where t is uh, time in seconds. All right. So our example, when a rock uh, falls from a cliff, what is the average speed uh, during the first two seconds of fall? And then what is the average speed between second one and second two? Okay. So when we're looking at this, first of all, we need to know what average speed means. Average speed means that you're going to kind of take the difference of your y's or the difference of your x's. So on A here, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, 16 uh, 2 squared minus 16 0 squared over 2 minus 0. All right. And so this is going to give me uh, 64 over 2, which is 32 uh, feet per second squared, right? Or, three, I'm sorry, 32 feet per second, per second squared. All right, so now on part B, we're going to look at uh, what happens between second one and second two. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to go 16, 2 squared minus 16 times 1 squared over 2 minus 1. Well, this is going to give me 64 again here because 2 squared is 4. 4 times 16 is 64 uh, minus 16 over 1. So now we have an average speed of 48 feet per second. So understand that as I elongate it, because what is our, our velocity when the rock first starts falling is zero, okay? And then we have a velocity of when it's at two seconds. So if I were to look at two seconds, it has a velocity of, uh, of that uh, 30, 64. We then kind of look at the average, which is the average between those, okay? So this is kind of our average rate of change here. So it's the difference in y's over the difference in x's. This should be very familiar to you guys. This should look like the slope formula. Remember, slope and average rate of change are synonymous, okay? So I have f of x uh, sub two minus f of x sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. But we're gonna look at this a little bit differently, okay? So we're going to look at this as, to get to x sub 2, that's really going to be taking x sub 1 and adding something to it. And that's where I get this h. So h is the difference between x sub 1 and x sub 2, okay? So h here equals x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It's the difference between them. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at this average rate of change of f of x sub 1 plus h minus f of x sub 1 all over h. h cannot be 0, right? Because you can't divide by 0. We're going to kind of look at that, what happens as h gets close to 0. Now, if you remember what a tangent line is, a uh, tangent line is the line that will intersect the graph at just that one point. So it only touches at that point. Now, when we're finding slope, we need two points. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do I get close to that tangent line, that slope of the tangent line, uh, by using uh, what we call a secant line. So if you remember what a secant line is, it's taking this point and going through it and finding this slope. Now, is this slope going to be the same as the tangent? No, but it's going to get close to it. And as I get closer, and closer to that value of the tangent, as, those, as the difference between my two points gets smaller and smaller, the closer I am going to be to that tangent slope, okay, to that tangent line. So we're going to find the slope um, of y equals x squared at point 2, 4, okay? So we're going to look at what's going to happen at that slope at 2, 4. And so we're going to kind of come up with a formula for that, okay? So here I have f of, so I'm finding my slope here using this formula, the average rate of change or slope, 
and I come here. So I, first I go f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. Remember, we're looking at point 2, 4. Okay, so then I'm going to plug 2 plus h into my function, which is x squared. So 2 plus h quantity squared minus 2 squared over h. Well, let's kind of multiply this all out. So this gives me 4 uh, plus 4h uh, plus h squared minus 4 all over h. Okay, so now... What I'm looking here now is I notice my 4's cancel out, and I have uh, 4h plus h squared over h. And everything has an h, right? So we're going to cancel out 1h there, and this gives me 4 plus h. So notice here that my slope of my, my secant line is going to be 4 plus h. So whatever my difference is, so if I looked at um, using, uh, let's say I used 1 here, okay? So I went over 1, my slope would be 5. But let's say I went over a half. So let's say I went from uh, uh, 3, so I went 2.5 here. Well, then my slope is going to be 4.5. Okay? So this is going to give me my, my slope of my secant line. Okay, so hopefully that, that helps you guys look here. If I were to look at, so I have the point 2, 4, maybe this will help. I, my next point would be 3, 9, right? If I look at the slope here, I have 9 minus 4 over 3 minus 2, which is 5. My difference between 2 and 3 is 1. If I come over here, I have 4 plus 1, which is 5, okay? So this is kind of a, a shortcut on finding that slope if I know the difference between my points. So the last thing we're going to kind of talk about is instantaneous rates of change and tangent lines. So the instantaneous rate, if we could take a rate at a kind of a snapshot, one instant, that's called the instantaneous rate, and the slope of the tangent lines are closely connected. And we're going to kind of look a lot at this slope of a tangent line um, or a slope at a specific point on a curve which is that slope of the tangent line. So we're going to look at that and delve a little bit more into that uh, later on. So this is just kind of a, a review of rates of change and then talking about uh, tangent to curves.